This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. It's taken me a long time to figure out, to put my finger on, what exactly it was I didn't like about conspiracy theorists. Now, in truth, there isn't actually all that much I don't like about them, but there was something that seemed off or wrong to me. And here's what it is. Generally speaking, conspiracism tends to focus too much on getting information into your head as opposed to getting information from your head to the public. Assuming you're a liberty-leaning conspiracist, well, the world would have more freedom if you got your ideas out as opposed to the world having more freedom by you getting ideas in. So, every minute that you spend doing your research or listening to your Alex Jones, well, you're not calling a talk radio station or holding a sign or writing a letter to the editor, doing the things that are at least marginally useful. So, knowing that to be the case, we can hypothesize that a person could, at least theoretically, be a conspiracy theorist and pretty effective uh, toward liberty if they were to avoid any inefficiencies such as, uh, again, reading long websites and theories and government documents and stuff. If you were just focusing on getting the conspiracy theory out there, so for instance right now the whole Seth Rich thing, that's sort of a conspiracy theory, and if you were, rather than spending a whole bunch of time researching it, holding a sign in front of Hillary Clinton's house on the issue, or uh, calling talk radio about it, well that, I, I, I think that might be pretty decent liberty activism. I think I can sort of get behind that. Yeah, it doesn't hit on all cylinders. You know, you'd be better off doing something related to New Hampshire or Bitcoin, but it's, it's not too bad. The other thing that I don't like with conspiracism is that I remember I was interviewed once by a conspiracist, and uh, you know, I like I, I I would I would not have a problem being interviewed by Joe Stalin. I I I, I don't I'm not picky about who interviews me. Uh, <laughs> the Joe Show. You hated him as dictator, but you'll love him as you, you'll love him as radio host. Anyway, you know, while the host was interviewing me, he just. He sort of went off on a rant about how everything was just so, you know, with chemtrails or something like that. And the the problem with that is that you're you're expecting to there, there's no schema between a schema however you say it, between you and the average listener. So like like if I talk about if I'm being interviewed or something like that, and I talk about. Uh, the Vietnam War being filled with atrocities by U.S. troops. Well, we all have schema on that. We understand that. Yes, I don't have to. I don't have to prove that to the person who is listening. I don't have to prove that the the U.S. budget is, uh, or that the U.S. has a you know a massive budget, and uh, 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 has a massive bu- massive uh, budget deficit and massive debt overall. There's schema on that. But if I just throw out there that the government blew up the the nine the nine eleven buildings or that they're trying to kill us with weather control well now that that's something that requires you have to establish the schema beforehand like before you can get anywhere with that kind of discussion ideally you want to focus on the parts that you can agree on first and then move forward from there so, so when I made a, a relatively hostile or at least dissenting call to talk radio a, a few days ago, this had to do with, uh, I guess the, 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 call, the uh, host was complaining about the fact that people who had violated the law were not being sent away from the United States in large enough numbers, undocumented immigrants mostly, entirely probably, 
So, so I, I didn't call him with a conspiracy theory. I called to raise a point that he already could agree with me about. I just told him that he, you know, before he throws stones from his glass house, he should remember that if he's complaining about people breaking the law, well, he breaks the law, and he knows that he breaks the law because he knows that there are hundreds of thousands of pages of federal law that he's expected to follow and that he can't follow it all. I don't have to convince him of that. He already instinctively knows it. I just have to bring it up and connect it to the problem that he was bringing up. No conspiracy theory required. No belief in any conspiracy theory required. There's so much that we can already act on, at least by bringing it up, so much that is verified and that people already know about. We could spend our whole lives working on that without ever having to spend a minute on a conspiracy theory. And maybe we'd get some traction. It's just, it, it seems inefficient. The conspiracists are still people whose hearts generally seem to be in the right place and who seem to be generally pushing in a pro-liberty direction, so I hope I'm wrong and that they, they can uh, actually generate some liberty with their conspiracism. But until I see an efficient way to use conspiracism, I'm going to focus on the verified stuff. Nope, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM, Feds don't want you to hear them.